The Upshot Project welcomes you to the Cheeky Travelers Podcast, a show for people who love and aspire to travel. In each episode, you'll get a greater insight into what traveling can do for you as it has for us. From our anecdotes, we aim to inspire you to go out and explore the world around you with an open mind. If you would like to see if our voices match our faces, you're more than welcome to pop over to our YouTube channel, The Upshot Project. But we also have other social media in Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok if you would like to reach out to us. And now, it's time to get lost. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Cheeky Travelers podcast. For today's episode, it's quite special because we are receiving our first guest, a friend of mine, Steph. What's Woo! up? Cheering. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually very weird to not have Hayden next to me, mm -hmm. like really. But uh, I'm going to introduce Steph. So <laughs> why are we having her here right now? Because she's a fellow traveler. She's been traveling to around, what, 45, 45 countries. countries. And she's from the queer community. So it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. So, hey. Hello. Is it a good introduction, you reckon? Great. It's, it's really perfect. Yeah, it's really a small intro, but you know, I we're, we're going to learn. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to learn for the next one. It's great. Um, so, as you might know, we start every episode with a cheeky question. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, I designed the perfect cheeky question for you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Would you rather... Never eat again chana masala <laughs> or never eat again burritos. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, ooh. Honestly, I'd skip chana masala, even though it's one of my favorites. Okay. Because there's no variations. It's just uh, straight up. I see. Yeah. I could have other curries, just like skip on that. Mm -hmm. But burritos is so large and you can have a million different versions. True. So that would be really sad. Yeah, true. Yeah. Because at first I was like, oh, what could I ask her that would be tricky? Like, yeah. Like, if you could never yeah. cook Asian food anymore, what would it be? And then I was like, she really loves her Mexican food. Yeah. No, so it would be really easy. It was tricky, but I've already thought about that question. Oh, so, shit. so I definitely know burrito is the perfect food for me. So, Fair enough. Yeah. But it's quite heavy on the belly uh, sometimes. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> <sighs> uh, that's a fail. <laughs> Hayden had another idea. It was more like uh, if you would lose one of your senses, what would it be? Ooh. Honestly, easily the smell because it's already so bad for me. Like it's really my least strong sense so i don't ah. feel i'd miss out a lot if i lost that but then you would lose a bit of the taste yeah that's definitely a worry but <laughs> then i think what if i couldn't see yeah and i'm incredibly scared in the dark so yeah. that's like no i can't i, I can't <laughs> live like that so yeah no i feel like forever living in the fear no of like shit i can't no no no, no, no. <laughs> sure I because think about it <laughs> you're not a big fan of the uh, horror movies and everything that is scary no so. I, i just can't i can't watch it at all you couldn't pay me to watch one oh yeah goodness. no i can't hmm. oh i got a good one then <laughs> <laughs> the, the one cheeky question transformed to three okay yeah okay never eat burritos again yeah I'll skip on. I won't watch. No, I can't watch horror movies. No burritos. Okay. No, 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 no. burritos. I'll all. get tacos. <laughs> Easy <laughs> fix. No, no. Even oh, no shit. Mexican ever. Like, uh, no. Damn. No. Yeah. Okay. Not Interesting. That bad. bad. Yeah. Thank you for answering. Yeah. With honesty. I, I felt it. Yeah, yes. I felt it. No. Yeah. Oh, good. So last week's spicy question <clears throat> was, are people from the queer community more inclined to have sex overseas than at home? Yeah. Because last week, we actually figured out that solo travelers, mm -hmm. they, they don't have more sex overseas, but they are more at risk of uh, catching, okay. because you don't catch it, but yeah. uh, STIs or okay. uh, all that stuff. So I was actually, yeah, I was actually wondering, because I read something on Reddit 
also because Reddit is not my best friend. Yeah, I feel that. I discovered Reddit last oh, week. Really? Oh really? Like, oh wow! What a world! Yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah, there was there was some talks about um, queer people. Yeah. Not out yet mm-hmm. to their families, but they travel to live their sexuality. Yeah. So yeah, I was actually wondering, do you think queer people have more sex overseas than at home? I think it's a really interesting question. Okay. I think it has a lot of layers. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think under the right lens, the answer is yes. And okay. under a different lens, the answer is no. And by that, I mean, if we take this example of people not being out in their country, still it depends where they would go. Because mm-hmm. if they go to a country that's super homophobic, yeah. uh, or some countries have laws against homosexuality, So in that case, I don't see them having more sex. Yeah. But then if you're from a super homophobic country and you go to a super liberal country mm-hmm. uh, that's super open about it, yeah. then yeah, I could definitely see that happen. Yeah. Um, but then yeah, if you take someone from a super progressive country that has no laws of course. homosexuality and then do the reverse, yeah. then yeah. yeah. So I think that's Because a big part of it. Because did you know there's actually <clears throat> all inclusive, all inclusive hotel or mm-hmm. holiday that are only for queer. for queer people yeah or a gay man or like yeah yeah i think that's know. a cool option for people not that don't feel as safe mm-hmm. to travel mm-hmm. because it's definitely a concern it's definitely something you have to think about yeah and kind of research before you go to any country in general because we don't know the laws of yeah. every country so yeah having an option like that is pretty cool and there's also cruises Yeah, only for cru- like yeah, it's so cool. yeah, it's pretty sick. <laughs> it's so cool. I haven't been, but yes. the idea, and the yes. concept is sick. Yeah, exactly. And like for for you, I guess what has been your experience with your queerness mm-hmm. while traveling? Um, I think for me, so I started traveling at 19, my first year in university, and that's also the year I came out ah, as a lesbian. Okay. Um, so I was still coming to terms with it myself. So it's not something that I felt here in Canada I couldn't express. Mm. It was just something new to me. And then when I started travel, I went to Guatemala and Salvador first. I still had reservations about okay. outing myself when I meet people because you never truly know. Even in Canada, mm-hmm. I mean, like yeah. gay people can't get married. We have no laws banning anything. It's super yeah. progressive countries. But still... A lot of people are homophobic. Mm-hmm, That's mm-hmm. the reality. So there's still always this little fear of, yeah. or concern of like when I meet someone new, they might be homophobic. Yeah. But when I'm at home, like I know people will, will protect me if anything. And you know your laws, you know where to go as well. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm. So I feel safe in that regard. But when I go to a new country, I don't want to A, offend anyone in, mm. in their culture and their vision uh, with their laws first. Yeah. Uh, but also you you don't know. You don't mm. know what can happen. D- do I have any protections? Like if someone just yeah. beats me up and tries to kill me, will I be protected by the police? Maybe not. Maybe they'll put me in jail. Like I have no clue. Exactly. Um, and I don't know how other travelers will react. Other. So yeah, I, I did have at first a lot of reservations mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, about outing myself if you want traveling yeah. and now I think it really depends like I do research before depending on the country every time you're traveling yeah 100%. seriously yeah it's like an extra uh, mental charge yeah you're putting But on yourself yeah. it's really necessary because mm-hmm. like if you travel and you're walking hand in hand with your yeah. boyfriend then it's just like whatever like most yeah. likely it'll be fine some countries still like no mm. big on PDA Yeah. Um, but you can't be arrested for that. You can't be beaten up for exactly. that. Yeah. Um, whereas as lesbians, it, to be fair, it's not as bad as two guys. Yeah. And I'm really conscious of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's still something we need to worry about and still something I research yeah. first. Yeah. Um, and even with other travelers, mm-hmm. um, I kind of gauge first and Seriously? see how open they are about the topic. Ah. And before just revealing it, yeah, just like kind of ask questions, yeah. see what kind of views they have. And then I can be open about it. Do you feel that... Mm, I don't know how to word it, but do you feel that as your identity as a traveler... Mm-hmm. Like me, for example, being a... What What am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, because I have a boyfriend now, I guess yeah. I'm more um, heterosexual 
passive, passive, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. Like it's yes, it's part of my identity, but I don't really think about it yeah. because, like you said, it's not as dangerous for me. Yeah. But do you think when you travel, so you have your traveler identity, mm-hmm. but really, really close to that, you also have your queer lesbian identity attached mm-hmm. yeah. that you can't necessarily reveal all of the time. Is yeah. it like, it's just mind blowing because that's something I've never thought about mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. You're always outing yourself, even yeah. outside of home. Yeah. It's yeah, <laughs> something you have to do your entire life. Yeah. It kind of never really stops. Um, yeah, it's definitely something you have to think about. Mm. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. It's a stress. Do you s- still feel stressed about it? I don't feel as stressed about it. Okay. And if I can compare it to, like I, I said earlier, yeah. at 19 is when I came out. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was a huge portion of that, of repressed identity that I had at that point that I never fully come to terms with, with mm. myself, with my friends, with my family, yeah. with everyone. So there was a huge part of me wanting to express it tenfold, <laughs> like much, much gayer than I actually feel now. <laughs> um, and I, the needing to express it more, oh. to, the needing to tell people to feel validated and maybe in parts because I didn't fully, fully accept it myself yet. Yeah. Th- yeah. That to me is my experience. And yeah. and with like anything when you say it it becomes real yeah you know uh, you know what i th- i talked about it this week um with noemi i i said it for the yeah. first time but i i saw a therapist before coming out because oh, i had seriously? i had these feelings inside of me that i couldn't fully process oh. and it took me about like seven or eight sessions i could say that like i was attracted to girls and yeah. i had a crush on a girl yeah. like whatever but it took me about eight sessions. It's like a session a week. Like, that's two months. To say, I am. I am gay. And I couldn't even say I'm a lesbian. Yeah, yeah. Like, there, I yeah. don't know why, but for a lot of girls, that's a difficult world. D- but, yeah, but, yeah, the L wor- yeah. word is... There's um, a deep meaning yeah. behind it. Yeah. And it's almost... Well, first, it's really marginalized mm-hmm. as well, but there's some type of connotation yeah. behind it. I couldn't, pu- I couldn't put a word on it, but yeah, no, I, definitely. I know what you mean. That's yeah. how I felt. So saying I am gay for well, that was really hard to say, but much easier than saying I'm a lesbian. Mm. But yeah, so when I first came out, it's expressing it and yeah. and wanting to tell everyone was very validating. Mm-hmm. But now, like, it's definitely something I still say. I mean, yeah. there's no shame in it, and I'm not hiding it purposely from anyone. Yeah. But the need to tell people is mm. much, much, much smaller. Like, there's yeah. there's no need. Just, like, I won't hide anything, yeah. but it's just, like, I don't feel it. So if I'm traveling now, mm-hmm. compared to the beginning, yeah. it's, like, whatever. Like, I'll just talk about it if we're on the topic. Yeah. And if I see that the people are open about, yeah. like, this topic or whatever, but mm-hmm. it's not as difficult as it was yeah. when I first started traveling and I yeah. needed that validation yeah. for my identity. So, it's interesting yeah. because you're in a relationship with my friend, mm-hmm. Noemi, mm-hmm. which is how we uh, got to meet each other. Yeah. And Noemi, is, I don't know how she is in travel when it comes to her identity and sexuality, but yeah. she's really like, oh, my bo- my girlfriend and I, blah, blah. Like She's yeah. really a... Uh, um, she's, she's just so whatever about it. Yeah. Has it ever happened while you were traveling that she was like, oh, like my girlfriend and I, and you were like, shh, <laughs> not now, not you know, the right moment. That would make a lot of sense with how bubbly and like impulsive she is yeah. with what she says. Um, but no, she's very reserved um, mm. when we travel ah. uh, and she's much more scared than me to show it, which was interesting to see because yeah. like here in Canada, she's so open and like so touchy feely. Yeah. yeah. Um, but for example, mm-hmm. There are some countries, um, some that are, I don't want to say Muslim oriented, but like mm-hmm. the population is more Muslim, yeah. um, that often is more homophobic. Yeah. But I found that in a lot of those countries, and this is very interesting, I feel, <laughs> men have such a close physical proximity, yeah. Yeah. much closer than in North America, yeah. because to them, touch between men is not sexual. It's just like you can be close with your friends mm-hmm. and whatever. And so because of that, a lot of men or women, like together, just friends, will walk hand in hand yeah. together in the street. Yeah. So in those countries, 
I feel very comfortable walking mm. hand, in, hand in hand with my girlfriend yeah. because no one could know that it's romantic because to them, it's not. Yeah. It's just physical closeness with either your family or your friends. So I'm and very comfortable yeah, with it, yeah. but she's still not. Okay. Because if we're in a country that, like, yeah, they're close like that physically, but they have laws yeah. against homosexuality, she'll be a bit more scared and won't want yeah. to touch at all. But again, okay. Again, do you feel that... Because both of you sometimes... People think you're sisters yeah. because you look alike. So yeah. does that help though? Honestly, incredible. <laughs> yes. Like such right? a hack. Yeah. yeah. No, it's so... It's, it's such a hack for us because even in Canada, people come to us all the time asking... Like, I don't think we look that much alike, but people will ask mm. us all the time, are you sisters? Are you twins? And yeah. in other countries where sometimes we're the two only white people there we look maybe even more similar than we do in canada yeah. uh, so they definitely think that we are at least cousins but yes. like probably sisters so they're just like oh yeah you want to book one room with one bed oh yeah normal yeah like, exactly. all good. they don't suspect or they don't no, think it's no, odd or yeah. whatever whereas I, i feel if we were two guys mm -hmm. or maybe like two girls from different races that yeah. like obviously you're not sisters yeah. Um, then yeah, maybe that'd be a bit more mm -hmm. difficult. Or yeah, two guys, I feel, would yeah. be more difficult in that respect. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which country was the um, scariest to be open about your sexual identity? Honestly, I, I know for some people they have like really scary, scary and bad experiences. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to discredit that because no, it does happen not. a lot. For me personally, there hasn't been something that's happened mm. in terms of my queerness yeah. that was big enough for me to even remember. Okay. So maybe like some small comments or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's just about me like hiding it or just not disclosing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so n nothing has happened in that respect to, <laughs> yeah. me, to me. And it's like, for example, in some countries and, and like as a straight ish girl or like whatever, any mm. straight girl will relate to this. Any orientation girl will relate yeah. to this in <laughs> travels especially in solo travels that if guys hit on you saying mm. like no isn't enough like oui. you yeah. have to say not not even like i have a boyfriend is enough you have to be married yeah, so like true. often it, yeah. like i wear rings and like often i'll consciously in the morning like put a ring yeah. on my like uh, married finger And just I'll just say yeah, like my husband's You're at home. Married my finger. married finger. <laughs> Your wedding finger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll consciously make that like switch so that yeah. it's easy and just like sometimes they're still suspicious like yeah why why are you like why is your husband not with you like i could be here with you it's like no no my husband's in the military like he'll mess you up <laughs> like, you don't want to go there man <laughs> it's so funny because i imagine you like without the ring being like Steph, the queer person, uh, yeah, and yeah. you put the ring on and you just transform, mm -hmm. and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm honestly, straight Steph yeah, now. Like I feel that I look, and there's no gay type because no. obviously there's so like so many girls that are so feminine you could never know. Yeah. Then some girls like you could tell or like whatever. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. that I look gay, yeah. and I because I dress in men clothes a lot yeah. of the times and like whatever, but. What is very obvious to me, and to a lot of people close to me, yeah. is not obvious at all to men, somehow. No, because if in their mind, queerness or um, homosexuality isn't a reality, yeah. they're not going to conceptualize it. No, and... it's just like, yeah, sporty girl. Yeah. We can share clothes. <laughs> Perfect wife. <laughs> Damn, how can you be in such denial? Sometimes, you know? Yeah, Damn. no, no, it's, yeah. So. Especially with I I think the 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 hat yeah it's the the hat makes it the hat is For like me I feel <laughs> like it's the gay touch yeah. but to a lot of men and not not just in other countries yeah. because it definitely happened like how I said my mm -hmm. first year of university when I was first starting to come out I was extra gay like yeah. rainbow wearing yeah. like everything super like I was my first year of university I mm. got to be like vice president of the pride club like I Damn. was super involved like yeah. super super and there was this guy <laughs> that's too funny there's this guy, like no details but this guy in my class 
a big football guy, like yeah. manly man. Yeah. And uh, we were sit buddies, like in one of my classes, and we became came friends. And he was inviting me to stuff, and like, yeah, we should go snowboard and stuff together. And I was like, this dude is so cool. <laughs> like, I've made one of my first friends. Like, this is so awesome. Yeah. And then after a few weeks in the class, I I had started dating a girl. And I was in class, and like, oh, hey, how's your weekend, yeah. whatever, and told him, like, oh, yeah, I was just with my girlfriend this weekend in Montreal. And he's yeah. like, what? Mm. Like, I, I thought we had something going here. He said that? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, dude, like, I look more manly than you, I yes. think. Like, what? And and I don't know, maybe he thought it was just, like, skater girl yeah. look, and he was yeah. super into it. But yeah, like, super big football guy, and, and to that style, oh, I guess, no, no sexuality related to the style. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's it was really pretty funny. funny. Yeah. Oh, and do you have some? Uh, uh, how do you say it? Do you have some good memories of, or not good memories, or like positive things that happened to you while traveling around your queerness? Around my queerness, oh, um, yeah. like I wouldn't say anything. Like I didn't get any special treatment oh. for being gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sucks. That would be <laughs> special gay card yeah. um no yeah i mean that would have been awesome but i think just like some dating stories i've had or like mm. some people i've met or maybe like we said some people go yeah. out more and like i haven't been too much in the gay scene in montreal okay. or like the gay going out scene because i'm i don't go out that much like i yeah. don't party that much mm. um so i haven't explored that too much in montreal but abroad like i often make it a point to visit a gay oh, bar because uh, right. it's super yeah. interesting to me to see yeah. how it is in different countries mm -hmm. and meet some people of that country and yeah. and talk to them about how they live that and how are yeah. the laws how yeah. like is it super homophobic is it not see their reality so i make it a point in all countries yeah. that i can to visit a gay bar it's so i think that was yeah. something that's more but like and thing. what have you learned by doing that Um, what surprised you the most, I guess? I think just how different the reality is. Um. And I'll say, like, for example, being in Canada, reading about some laws feels so distant. And such a reality mm -hmm. that we can't yeah. really fully comprehend. Mm -hmm. Like, I still comprehend, can't comprehend, like, people being killed because they're gay or pe people being stoned because they're... Like, that's yeah. still something I can't fully wrap yeah. my head around. Mm. But there's some things that like meeting people from different countries and, and seeing like how they have to hide it or how they can never get married how they, like some laws that they don't have or yeah. some places that you wouldn't expect that's more open than i would think so i think yeah. it's just seeing different cultures and different realities that hmm. yeah was more interesting to me yeah that's so good and would you have some tips for young gays and lesbians and queer that are a yeah. bit like that are afraid of traveling i think honestly especially if you're not an experienced traveler mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. definitely start with countries that are open yeah about being gay about yeah. being queer because it's an a less layer that you have to worry about because there's a lot of stuff that you have to be very conscious of when you travel you don't want to lose your stuff you don't want to yeah. get mugged like you have to be very conscious of your environment and adding that extra layer mm -hmm. of fear of exposing your identity yeah. i mean it's fine like i've traveled to a lot of countries yeah. that are like very strict laws but to start just pick countries that are open about it yeah. um you can try to go to gay bars in different areas True. meet people They, they'll tell you tips mm -hmm. they'll, they'll tell you like how it goes in their country mm -hmm. how to meet people what you can and can't yeah. do and what you should or shouldn't do yeah. um so i think that's the first tip mm -hmm. and then once you're more comfortable with it then yeah just go wherever but read about it before you go to yeah but respect the norm yeah but it's interesting because like we said earlier it's not because the country is like look or sound really progressive that mm -hmm. once you're there you're gonna be fully accepted by everyone no and you know so i have a story to tell about yeah. that which you can tell yeah thanks <laughs> um i i don't want to i don't want to bring down yeah australia but i'll talk about australia yeah, yeah fair enough. <laughs> um so i i spent about six months in australia and that was now back in 2017 okay. around that time okay Uh, I spent around six months there and it was super cool and honestly I felt super accepted like I went to gay bars there and like everyone was super chill with it but what really shocked me because to mm. me when I went to Australia so many things felt like Canada yeah such a progressive yeah. country yeah. a lot of things looked like Canada 
except people are fitter. <laughs> <laughs> They're more active. But other than that, a lot of things felt like Canada. And something that really shocked me, that was in Melbourne. I was walking and I saw this huge billboard. And that was at the time that Australia... Uh, Just it, legalized. It, no, no? It, it wasn't yet legal <gasps> to marry yeah. for gay people. And this huge billboard just said vote no <gasps> think about our children <gasps> and that oh my yeah, god like i have good shiver yes, <laughs> I'm good shiver. I'm just like i remember how shocking that was to me because like that's it that's a diss to my whole identity at that yeah. point and I, I had felt so accepted in the country i had felt that i had nothing to hide there was a disconnection there, between yeah what you lived and what you saw. Yeah, well, especially in Melbourne. Um, Big, yeah. It's such a progressive city, if you it's want really to. Especially, hippie, yeah, like yeah. Fitzroy, this area that I was in the most. It was super queer friendly, like mm -hmm. super, super, super progressive. But then seeing this huge billboard in that city, I was like, that's insane. It was really, really oh shocking God. to me. And I was still in Australia when it got mm -hmm. voted yes. So that was really cool to live did but you party at the like was there like huge parties around i and... i personally don't remember partying okay. but i know that it was a huge like shift <sighs> of joy in the country it was like a really big mm -hmm. statement that was happening yeah um which is really cool but the thing is that i realized in moments like this is that the people you surround yourself with yeah. often have your ideals mm -hmm. and your values and yeah. they're not the reality mm -hmm. they are your reality yeah. but they're not the uh, reality and seeing something like that brought me back to yeah. wow like that is the reality like some people are okay with it and some are really really not okay with it yeah. so that's a, like a big uh, yeah it's so interesting because that's something that i think of like yeah. really often like every two months <laughs> i get that reminder that really oh shit like because yeah i feel that my friends are so super open-minded and yeah. i really get along with them and we share the same values but yeah. when i meet someone that is super homophobic or mm -hmm. racist i'm like oh yeah so we we yeah. still have progress <laughs> to yeah. do you know oh 100 oh. and i feel that that i can see it a lot on social media and mm. social media is really really interesting in the sense okay. that the algorithm of any platform you're yeah. on is meant to reflect who you are yeah. and reflect what you enjoy seeing mm. and so we often forget that millions and hundreds of millions of people think the absolute opposite of you yeah. and sometimes yeah. on your feed <laughs> you'll get something that reminds you of that mm. it's like super homophobic like trans people should die like gay people should die like whatever whatever and then i see yeah. that and i'm like that's crazy like, it doesn't sound real at it, first it, it, yeah, yeah. Well, like when you're when your whole feed is just like super mm. open super progressive and you see comments like that you're like oh my god like actual people would want to see me die yeah because of yeah. who i love mm. that's such a crazy thought mm. but yeah it's important sometimes to remind ourselves of that and be conscious that yeah we're very very lucky to live in a society yeah. that's still very progressive and protects yeah. our rights and values exactly us as well i remember when i was in hawaii with hayden we were walking outside it was maybe 11 or midnight and there was two guys in front of us holding mm -hmm. hands yeah there were probably tourists as well and there was this i assume he was american mm -hmm. based on his accents and what he said <laughs> <laughs> With on his um, trottinette uh, scooter, on his scooter, just yes. <laughs> rolling by, yeah, and he screamed, "Faggot!" To really? yeah, oh, to the two guys, to the two guys in front really? of us, and my first reflex was like, "Ah, he's like a friend, and he's joking yeah, type yeah, of yeah, thing." Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> do you understand? Yeah. What what world do I live? Like, to think that it was, that a, it was a joke yeah like because it's so like you cannot even process someone being that homophobic so exactly it's just like, oh for sure they're like yes. he's also gay like <laughs> kidding with his friends yes, exactly. for sure <laughs> about that. and for then sure. the guy continue like just rolling around yeah. with his scooter a full grown yeah. man anyway like <laughs> that's another story but then he kept saying like mm. insults like on yeah. his own not as loud but i was like oh no shit he's serious yeah 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 he is serious he's actually and hateful <laughs> Yeah, that asshole. Wow. That's and wild. Hayden and I looked at each other and we're like, fuck yeah. So that was a reminder that like, yeah, yeah shit, mm -hmm. it exists. Yeah. 
And I was like, Bus. poor tourists. They are here trying to enjoy their holidays. Yeah. Thinking that they're safe. Yeah. Thinking that they're safe. Mm-hmm. And are they? Mm-hmm. Are they? Like, I... Even, like, I wasn't even... Uh, uh, the guy didn't point it at us or yeah, yeah. notice us. And I was like... And still affected you a lot. Exactly. Yeah, so I was like, for sure. what about them? Mm-hmm. They're just trying to have a good time. And yeah. my, I guess my question is when something like that happened, I guess it depends on your resili- resilience, but mm-hmm. does it affect your, your whole holiday? Or you just go like, whatever, I'm used to it. I, I can't say that something specific like that happened to me, okay. but what I will say, and it, this is not just abroad, like yeah. this happened to me in Canada as well, yeah. uh, not particularly insults or people mm-hmm. saying stuff outright, yeah. but mm-hmm. people looking at me mm-hmm. in a very demeaning way or making me feel very awkward. And I felt that awkwardness and just such a shitty feeling to have. But I decided at one point that like I have nothing to feel ashamed of. Mm-hmm. And why would I be burdened yeah. by this awkwardness, by the ignorance of these other people? So what I do now mm. is that, well, now it hasn't happened in a very, very long yeah. time. But when it did happen, I'd hold the stare. So I'd just be like... <laughs> and I'd hold the stare so intently that they'd feel so awkward mm-hmm. and have to look away. Yeah, And I'd just be like... Mm. Yeah. You reverse yeah. the like power you, dynamic. Yeah, like yeah. you should feel shameful. Yeah. Like I have no, yeah. I'll just like, I'll kiss my girl right now and like you will look away because yeah. you have something to be ashamed of. Exactly. Like I don't. Yeah. So when I reverse that, for me, it was very liberating, mm-hmm. like in a way mm-hmm. of like, yeah, like I don't care about your stare. Yeah. Like you are the one who should be ashamed. Yeah. And then, yeah, then they all looked away and but I don't how, know. If, uh, how did you make that switch? Honestly. I, I don't remember a specific moment for that, but mm-hmm. maybe a specific moment in my life that it was just about radical acceptance. Yeah. And it was just like, what I, like people are going to hate me no matter what. Yeah. If it's not on your sexuality, it's going to yeah. be on your looks, on yeah. your smile. And like, no or, matter yeah. how perfect you can be, yeah. there's 8 billion people on the planet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, there is no one on earth that everyone loves. Mm-hmm. Someone, at least one people, but more than that often will hate you, so why not do just exactly whatever you want? Yeah. Because people will love you and hate you regardless. Mm-hmm. And I think I, I had that moment at some point in my life, and that started the shift for me yeah. in like in myself, in my identity, in my sexuality, but like everything. everything. Mm. And yeah, so that happened. And now that I, we're talking about it, I realize, have I not received any look like that? Or have I just never noticed anymore? Yeah. Because I just don't care. I love the term you used, um, radical acceptance. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. It's interesting because it's so uh, it's so powerful. Yeah. Because yes, that, that, that's what you need to do. Yeah. Just, and like this yeah. specific, like I, if I can pinpoint like a specific <laughs> moment that yeah. I felt that, um, it was my first time I went to Asia. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't know if I've already told you this story, uh-huh. but uh-huh. it was in Thailand. I've always wanted to shave my head. Like, I've uh, always yeah. thought about uh-huh. that. Uh, and I never had the balls to do it. Like, I was always, like, there was always an event, like, coming up. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll prefer my long hair. I've always had... To... The only thing I was confident about was my long hair. Okay. The oh. only thing I really, really liked about myself was that. Mm. So there was so much confidence and femininity yeah. related to my yeah. long hair. Mm. Um, so I was always really scared to do it. But it's always something I've wanted to do. And when I got to Thailand, it was so hot. Yeah. It was so hot, and I remember having this one thought, like random thought. I wish I had my, like I wish it was shaved right now. It'd be so much mm-hmm. better. And I had that thought, and I was like, if I don't do it in the next ten minutes, yeah. I will never shave my head. I'll you are m- like that, though. Yeah, you're like, like- <laughs> it has to be now because it, like, yeah. the feeling of confidence of doing it will go mm-hmm. away. And so, and so I decided in that moment. I had this thought, like. Yeah. People will hate regardless. Like, who cares, like, if I'm ugly, like, if I don't have... If I'll yeah. find something else to be confident about. Yeah. And I just had this thought, people mm. will hate regardless. Mm. And I walked to the barbershop, and I was just like, yeah. The, you didn't even speak English. So I just had to show a shaved head. <laughs> and we had to translate, because he was like, I can't shave it. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, yes, do it. Right now. <laughs> and did I you go did. into the barbershop? Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah. And then after we had yeah. a translator in, he shaved it. And honestly, I was so ugly for a while. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was so ugly. And I learned to not care anymore. Yeah. And that, like, shifted Because, everything. yeah, and... Because you had nothing to hide yourself with. Yeah, No exa- hair to exactly. hide behind. Yeah, and so yeah. I had to, like, start to figure out other things that made me confident and, like, happy about myself. Yeah. Because, yeah, I shaved it. And, like, even after the barbershop, I took an actual razor to, like... I, I looked like I had cancer for a while. Like, people, <laughs> yeah, people were scared to make comments to me. They're, they didn't want to ask, like, why is your hair... And, like, they yes. were scared. Um, but, yeah, so I had to learn that way. And I think yeah. that impacted a lot how comfortable ah, I was. Because that was in the first yeah. year that I did my coming out. Mm, so I think mm. that had a lot to do with me being so comfortable and just, yeah. like, whatever. Like, so you'll I like guess, me or you'll hate. And, yeah, so I, I guess know. the second tip for new uh, young gays mm-hmm. and lesbians yeah i'm joking when i queer say that babies. <laughs> queer babies is yeah. to go to asia and shave their Sh- heads. shave it off cool. shave it all off. tip two check yeah yeah because that's it it's true what you said like yeah. you have nothing else to rely on like that was my one confidence thing and then it's just yeah. like you'll have to learn like you, there will be something else you'll be confident about and i just yeah, forced it on me yeah yeah and it's changing over time as well yeah. what you're confident about that's it you exactly. know and yeah Mm, mm. so interesting yeah i remember noemi telling me that where was it that it was it in kenya that it was really hard for her to hide mm. that you were in a relationship was it kenya i can't remember a few countries mm. um because on that trip we went to uh, kenya and egypt mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um yeah. which are two countries that are not very progressive on uh, being out and about if yeah. you're gay um so yeah so i think it was was hard and it was a bit frustrating for her and there was the fear associated with it of like it's not just you will be mean to us and be like oh you yeah. got them queers like yeah. you know it it's not knowing will you just insult us or will you try to assault and kill us yeah that's the yeah. fear mm-hmm. of like we yeah. have no clue like if it's just insults whatever like i don't care yeah but, but not at the knowing. same time insulting in public it's also uh, outing you to more people true you yeah. know, so that which, which also, could have this reaction of like, yeah, we don't exactly. know how far yeah. can hatred take you, mm-hmm. in, mm-hmm. And, and we know that in a lot of places, yeah. hatred takes you to murder. Yeah, and yeah. so yeah, that's definitely a fear, and I think that was a bit hard for her to process. And, it's fucking mind yeah. blowing. Yeah, because like, and because it was her first trip, really like a backpacking trip. Yeah, she had only True. been to like all inclusive so, and stuff before. Yeah, before and so, we yeah. were gonna out Noemi, she yeah. thought there was no supermarkets <laughs> in Africa. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Love to you, knowing me, you're listening. <laughs> but, yeah, no, like, she had no experience at all backpacking. Yeah. Like, I had been to about, like, 40 countries at that point. Yeah. But she had never backpacked ever. And our first country, Kenya. Boom. <laughs> Damn. At, which is, like, yeah, like, not super out for yeah. LGBT and stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that was a hard reality adjustment exactly. for her. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, man, it's so... I read something online earlier in... Um... Yeah, it, it, it was, we were talk, talking about queerness and stuff, yeah. but um, it's also very, very, very hard for trans people mm-hmm. to travel as well. Yeah. The, harder, I think. Harder, yeah, because yeah. When, when you're gay or lesbian or non-binary mm-hmm. or two-spirited, yeah. it's, I guess, easier in brackets to to hide yeah. because sexual orientation isn't written on your yeah. forehead but mm-hmm. when it comes to when it comes to trans people mm-hmm. like it's more hmm, I don't I don't like to say it n- more visible but it depends like yeah well like going in your train of thought yeah, yeah. I think one thing that's easier is like you said mm-hmm. if you're gay like I don't have to say it mm-hmm. so yeah this that the easy part for me is that I can go anywhere and just say yeah my husband like whatever and people won't know mm-hmm. the hard part about that is having to consciously hide your identity yes. which is like a mental struggle and it's it can be very hard. So like, that's for, yeah, yeah like bisexual, gay, Like whatever. instead of saying like, my girlfriend, my girlfriend, you have to say my friend. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. So, mm-hmm. so there's a, there's a part that can, can bring up shame and like, just cause yeah. just saying that over and over to yourself, that can be a hard part. Mm-hmm. But for trans people, like I can't fully speak on the experience since yeah, I course. haven't lived that experience. Yeah. But what I've heard of other travelers, mm-hmm. what I've read about other travelers mm-hmm. that are trans, it's on the one hand, um, even if, uh, let's say, like a male to female, mm-hmm. so like a, a female traveling and she has no visible markers uh, that could be associated yeah. to someone that was a male previously, yeah. 
sometimes your passport exactly. still has mail. Exactly. And, and in some cases, no. But let's say again, this female that hasn't had the surgery mm-hmm. to uh, replace the organs, and then you have to have a pat down at the, mm. the scanner at the airport mm. either you can see That's the so scan I, I don't know how well you can see like what's under your pants <laughs> but if you have a pat down then the agent is like yeah. what is going on down there yeah. and then you have to explain and it's like are they going to imprison you and kill you because of that yeah. that's an incredible like I can't even imagine that reality but I know that's that this is something that's really hard so I think for You're, trans people yeah. even more uh, they have to be even more wary of where they go because they have no way to, to fully hide it if you want you're you're already freaking stressed when you go through an airport and you have nothing yeah, to yeah. hide i'm not yeah. saying that trans people have something yeah. to hide by the way that's really not what i'm saying but like if you know you're going into a country that it's yeah that, not that, really that you can be killed if you're trans then yeah in some part you have to hide your identity <sighs> because you know the repercussions so yeah i can't imagine that level of stress that would be incredible yeah. and does it mean does it mean that in certain cases some trans people need to switch again to their birth gender I, to I travel so. safely yeah you know? i think so especially yeah depending like if you haven't been able to switch your passport and you still have like a male presenting picture yeah. with a male marker on yeah. your passport but you present as female um then yeah depending what country you go you maybe have to like yeah. dress up more as male, like yeah. male presenting to just pass that and then mm. be free to uh-huh. do whatever. But yeah. I think, like, if I was trans, I think I would be even more wary of where yeah. I go because yeah. of that. I can't even imagine the stress that mm-hmm. they might go through. But I feel for me, it's pretty easier to, like, go under mm-hmm. the radar. I don't have this stress of, like, yeah. I- I'm the same picture always exactly. and yeah. like, whatever. Yeah. The same, like, uh, gender marker and stuff. So yeah. I think I'd be, like, double wary and just exactly. go to countries that are open about trans people mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so yeah i think yeah that's weird, and probably. some countries that i saw was um iceland mm-hmm. was there was some towns in the u.s but honestly i don't know why but i wouldn't trust it very tricky yeah <laughs> very tricky i would very so tricky. i guess iceland i i don't uh, fuck i didn't have the time to finish mm-hmm. the article but yeah. i think there was spain Possibly. or a- every um western, western countries Europe in Europe a bit more progressive yeah yeah. exactly Mm -hmm. Brazil it was a big no Mm -hmm. for trans people but it's more uh, gay friendly oh interesting with Brazil there's huge communities um, Hmm. of like gays lesbian yeah in Brazil so that's really interesting but yeah it's it's such a big spectrum yeah and it's like of course we're not especially not me but like and you're not a specialist in every Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know yeah, and yeah. for every member of the community yeah yeah for sure it's yeah thanks for um bringing us into uh, mm-hmm, to this reality yeah. yeah how do you feel uh, talking about it and go deeper maybe uh, in the conversation about this you want me to go deeper in the conversation no, no, or no, how, how do, do you feel, feel about, about that <laughs> <laughs> sorry it wasn't clear no i think it's always like really interesting conversation it's not conversations that we have all the time mm. i think it's very necessary conversations i think it's important conversations yeah. and hopefully if there's any baby queers listening yes. to this like it might give them hope that like you can definitely travel yeah. like i've traveled in all continents um and just go and have fun. Just be safe about it. But yeah, yeah. it's cool to have these mm-hmm. kinds of conversations. Mm-hmm. Cool. Thanks. Uh, and now for uh, next episode, I really wanted uh, to talk about something, but I don't have a spicy question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too tired. But yeah, in the next episode, I really wanted to talk about sexual tourism, actually. Cool. So, and I guess what, and don't don't necessarily answer this, but what country mm-hmm. is the mm-hmm. most famous i mm-hmm. guess for sexual tourism and i think it's not what we might think well i know the answer so you I'll know say the it, answer <laughs> don't say it <laughs> or towns or whatever but mm-hmm. uh it, and it's a uh, it's actually intense there's a mm-hmm. huge industry about sexual yeah. tourism so i'm quite excited to talk about it and yes hey thank you uh, steph i'm really Thanks happy yeah, uh, was cool. it bad like no, it was uh, awesome. that, okay cool, yeah, it was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> i'm like i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> but i'm doing it <laughs> yeah, but cool. 
yeah, uh, thank you very much guys for listening or watching and I guess don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Spotify and Apple Podcast and we will see you next week. To them. <laughs>